Welcome to Middle Grade Book Adventures, where every month at the Kingston Library, we preview a new middle grade book that we think you might enjoy. This month, we're going to look at The Swifts, A Dictionary of Scoundrels by Beth Lincoln. On the day they are born, every Swift child is brought before a sacred family dictionary. They are given a name and the definition. A definition it is assumed they will grow up to match. The star of this story is Shenanigan Swift, little sister, risk taker, mischief maker. I'm going to read chapter two, The Dictionary. Back in the old tights and doublets days of the Swift family, every child had been named either Mary or John. It got terribly confusing at dinner time when someone asked a John to pass the potatoes and 10 hands shot out at once. And so Mary Swift, the 35th, had begun the tradition of naming her children using the family dictionary. The idea stuck and the Swifts prospered. People often overlooked a Mary or a John, but they seldom forgot a person named Matriculus or Flinch. She Nanigan couldn't remember the day she was born, but she could picture it very well. The hospital room, the nurses, her mother tired and smiling as Shenanigan's father fussed over her pillows. She pictured herself too, wrapped up like a little peanut with a shock of disobedient hair already erupting out of her head. She pictured the dictionary, and this part was easier because she was looking at it, an ancient leather-bound monster of a book bursting its bindings with pages of calf skin and parchment and paper with entries in crisp modern fonts, wonky typewritten letters, and hand-scrawled script with long S's that look like F's. The dictionary would have been brought in, set on the bed, shenanigan pictured the nurse's nose wrinkling in distaste, and opened at random by shenanigan's mother. Her eyes would have been closed. She would have run her finger down the pages and stopped on a word and definition that would become her child's name. Shenanigan could picture this so well because every Swift's first day began in exactly the same way. The only exception, as far as she knew, was Arch Aunt Schadenfreude. She'd been born five weeks early on a family trip to Germany, and her parents had had to make do with what was available. Felicity dashed off upstairs before Aunt Inheritance had finished speaking. Aunt Schadenfreude was immediately embroiled in a menu discussion with Cook and Maelstrom began to inspect the fountain pen attachment of his penknife. Finding herself roundly ignored, Aunt Inheritance approached the great glass case that housed the dictionary. It was open at the title page. Illuminated has two definitions, one being lit up and the other decorated with intricate colored designs. And this page was both. The Illuminated, illuminated page had a dedication printed in complicated letters. The Dictionary of the House of Swift. Aunt Inheritance stepped forward until her nose was almost touching the case. She took out a small key from a chain round her neck, carefully, reverently. She unlocked the door and, with trembling white gloved fingers, reached out to touch a yellowed page. There was a sound like someone rifling through the pages of a large book and a rising shriek, and then Felicity barreled into the landing. Behind her, pursuing her fleeing figure down the length of the grand staircase, were the moths. Shenanigan smiled. A few days after the Siege Master 5000's destruction, Shenanigan had picked up the post from the Solomon. Addressed to her was a small square package with holes poked in the top, and inside were dozens of caterpillars she had ordered from an ad in the back of a wildlife magazine. Shenanigan had crawled into the back of Felicity's cavernous wardrobe, opened the box, and let the caterpillars feast on Felicity's clothes. They chewed through wool and silk and cotton, growing fat and sleepy, spinning their cocoons inside the warm, dry, dark space. Now, it seemed, the cocoons had hatched. Shenanigan wished she had been there for the moment Felicity had opened her wardrobe to see the moths glaring back at her. Each velvet body was the size of Shenanigan's palm, with two enormous yellow eyes on the wings that were supposed to fool predators. They moved in a furiously blinking whirlwind towards the chandelier, scattering dust. The wings brushed Shenanigan's face. 
She thought it was rather nice, like being in the center of a soft tornado. But judging from the way Aunt Inheritance was howling and batting her hair, she disagreed. One of the moths, lured by the light illuminating the dictionary, had got into the glass case. When Inheritance saw it, she screamed as if someone were holding a match to the Mona Lisa. Amidst the noise and chaos, Phenomena calmly flicked off the light switch. Confused, the moth scattered, some farther into the house, but most through the open door and out into the noonday sun to terrify the local birds. Shenanigan burst out laughing. Felicity spun around, her eyes bright and wet and utterly furious. Look what you did, she shrieked, holding up a scrap of blue silk. It might once have been a dress, but the moths had chewed so many holes in it that now it could have been a swimsuit for an octopus. The sight only made Shenanigan laugh harder. My clothes are ruined, cried Felicity. I made half of them myself. Well, it serves you right. Shenanigan. Cook's leather jacket creaked as she crossed her arms. Her expression was stern and Shenanigan's stomach shrank. She looked at Malstrom, her staunch ally, but he looked disappointed, which was worse. What? Felicity started it. You little beast. How would you like it if I destroyed something you'd made? Felicity cried. Shenanigan's stomach made a miraculous recovery. You did. That's for the Sigmeister 5000. You, your stupid catapult. You made it in an afternoon. Some of those clothes took me weeks. It wasn't stupid. It was crack. They fell silent at the sound of Aunt Schadenfreude's stick hitting the banister. Her eyes pinned Shenanigan in place like she was one of her moths. Inheritance, are you all right? Aunt Inheritance was still brushing imaginary moths out of her hair. There was dust on her previously white gloves. Yes, yes, I think so. Shenanigan, growled Schadenfreude. Apologize to your aunt. I'm sorry, said Shenanigan promptly. I don't have a problem with you yet. Good, and to your sister, said Aunt Schadenfreude. No. Aunt Schadenfreude glared at Shenanigan. Shenanigan glared at her aunt. She squared her shoulders and got ready to kick and scream and shout. But Aunt Schadenfreude only shrugged. Very well, she said. Felicity's mouth dropped open. What? She cried. You're just going to let her off? Oh, she'll be punished, of course, said Aunt Schadenfreude, shooting a grin look at Shenanigan, who'd been doing a very small victory dance. But I doubt it will have much effect. It's who she is. She can't help her name. That's not an excuse, but it is a reason. Aunt Inheritance clapped her hands together to rid them of some of the dust. The dictionary has enormous power after all. She wouldn't be called Shenanigan if it wasn't who she's meant to be. Shenanigan frowned. She passed the dictionary every day. It was just a normal book, a bit too big to read in the bath, but a book all the same. What do you mean? She asked warily. It named me inheritance, knowing that I would be keeper of the family records. It named your uncle Malstrom, foreseeing his seafaring future. And it named you Shenanigan, knowing that you would cause trouble. Phenomena made a skeptical noise. So you're saying the dictionary is magic? No, sobbed Felicity. They're saying that I'm supposed to put up with her. And she tore upstairs, weeping into her soft scrap of silk. Shenanigan refused to feel guilty. Felicity would be fine in a few days. It was only a couple of dresses after all. They couldn't have taken her that long to make. Poor Felicity, it's not her fault her name is mundane, sighed Aunt Inheritance. She meant that Felicity's name, like Prudence, August, Rose, and Bill, was perfectly normal in non-swift society. Such members of the family always live perfectly boring, perfectly average lives. Why, I remember Arch Aunt Hope, lovely woman, but tragically became an optimist, which reminds me, her little round glasses flashed at Aunt Schadenfreude, about that matter I wish to discuss. Elsewhere in the house, there was a muffled boom. I told you, the experiment was time sensitive, sighed Phenomena as she trudged off to see what had exploded. If you're interested in to see what happens in the Swifts and what happens when Shenanigan makes a map of the entire house and discovers a mystery and then discovers 
some very, very shocking secrets along the way, then check out the Swifts available at the Kingston Library. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our next middle grade book adventure.